Greetings to everyone. Welcome to the Bigfoot question and answer session uh, about the Mogollon Monster, Arizona's Bigfoot. Now please keep in mind that this, these question and answers are from what I have, I have observed. They're not necessarily what somebody else might observe in the Northwest or in the Southeast or something like that. This is information specific to Arizona. However, a lot of the findings may be relevant to those other areas. Uh, it, these are my own opinions. I can only base my opinions on what I have seen or observed or what I feel about. These opinions may change. Okay, as time goes by and I collect more data and I observe more stuff, then the, you know I might reformulate theories I might reformulate the thinking and so forth so this is not cut in stone now this is for the 22nd of August 2014 um, it's a Friday and so we'll get right into the questions uh, Lynn says do you think that they are or at least some clans migrate, uh, follow the game, or pretty much are permanent residents. Well, Arizona is a little different than a lot of other wide open spaces like Alaska, Canada, and stuff like that. Our areas that will uh, support a Bigfoot is limited. Uh, as you know, a lot of Arizona is desert. The Mogollon Rim runs through Arizona, east to west, from Flagstaff to the New Mexico border. Um, <clears throat> so therefore, migration for the Bigfoot in Arizona uh, does not really make sense because the game, uh, like the elk and the deer, they don't migrate from one seasonal field to another for food or water. They basically change elevations. They may be high up on the mountain during the summertime or they may come down lower during the winter. So if they are following the game or the food uh, then more than likely it's not going to be that much of a change or that much of a, a migrational pattern. That's not to say that the animals like the caribou and stuff like that that migrate long distances would kind of make the, the Bigfoot have to follow them or have to migrate them, follow, migrate with the caribou. Uh, <clears throat> animals uh, may, migrate, may migrate from higher and lower elevations depending upon the weather, the feed, and the water. And most Arizona hunters know that, um, you know, because they start hunting in September and I believe the last hunt is in December a lot of times we get heavy snows and so they know that it's easier and better for the animals to be down in the lower elevations where it's not quite so bleak and cold um, where the food is easier to get to so you know it would stand to reason that Bigfoot would pretty much do the same um, in most cases, the Arizona Bigfoot stays put. Um, as a clan, their clan stays in the gen same general areas. Um, they stay there as long as there's plenty of food, plenty of water, and the humans allow. Um, you know, the humans can force the Bigfoot out of an area. Now one thing I have noticed is there's a lot of activity around Indian nations or Indian reservations. Um, this is because they pretty well know that they're safe on the Indian land. Uh, you know, that's kind of how intelligent they are. And the Indians do not hunt the Bigfoot. Um, most of them believe that the Bigfoot is their brothers or another tribe or to be respected, they're special beings. And so therefore, they're more or less protected on Indian land because the normal white man 
can't go hunting on the Indian Reservation without special permits, a guide, and, and so forth. And then they are very well supervised while they're on the Indian land. <clears throat> Forest fires might have something to do with where the Bigfoot is located in Arizona. Um, in one of the areas where I was researching for quite some time, the uh, Bigfoot were concentrated in a certain specific area because the water was easy to get to. There was lots of game and stuff like that. But then a forest fire uh, came rampaging through the area. And for about a year I was kind of wondering where the Bigfoot went to. I had to really restart the process trying to figure out where they would be. I had to look at the four criteria. They need plenty of water, plenty of food, plenty of vegetation to hide in, and the lack of mankind. Uh, fortunately, uh, it only took me about a year, but I located them, and they were only about five miles away from where they originally were. So they didn't move too far. Now that doesn't mean that they didn't move quite a ways away and then come back once the forest fire activity had died down. Um, <clears throat> fire is uh, something that we have to contend with now in Arizona because of the dry seasons and so forth. We are in a drought. We've been in a drought for years and years. Uh, most Arizonans don't even realize that, but we are. And um, it's kind of funny because, you know, people love to camp in green forests. And unfortunately, if they start a fire and burn down that section of forest, they don't want to use that anymore. So they move on to the next patch of green forest and until it burns down. So little by little, uh, the actual habitat that can support a Bigfoot is going away. So it might come to the point sometime in the future where I might have to leave Arizona in order to be able to study the Bigfoot. That would be unfortunate, but you got to do what you got to do. <clears throat> okay. Uh, young adults might go on a walkabout, and this is an Australian term for the Aboriginals, where they sometimes need to go off and seek spiritual uh, comfort or find themselves or whatever and they go on a extended travel okay and the Bigfoot might do this and one of the reasons why they might do it is in search for mates um, I don't know if they're intelligent enough to know about inbreeding and stuff like that but when a um, Bigfoot male or female approaches a certain age, they may go on a walkabout and search for new, a new mate uh, to bring new blood into the family line. So um, I am not sure whether or not uh, the Bigfoot couples stay together. Uh, for a long period of time, I was noticing that Whistler and Hooter were not too far apart. Um, you know, usually if I heard one or saw one, the other one wasn't too far behind. Well, of course, Squeaker was the, the youth, and he was usually just in front of Hooter as they come off the mountain down to the campsite in order to uh, uh, see what kind of goodies I'd left him. But um, then Whistler started not being there as often. And to tell you the truth, I haven't seen Whistler in about a year. So I don't know if they mate for life. I don't know if they, um, if the male mates hangs around for a little while and then leaves. I don't know. But, you know, maybe time will tell. Maybe Whistler will come back and we'll see more about it. 